we are going to discuss how you can tackle the GIS exam assignment or problems. There will be a few questions that you must answer using the GIS uh, software, in this case the QGIS, but I just want to recommend a method that you can use to do your uh, to answer your question or do the assignment that will be given to you. It will be easy to answer these three questions when you read your assignment or your question. Uh, you must not open your QGIS first. First look at these three questions and then you can open your uh, QGIS to start with your uh, practical or your exam. The first thing is uh, read the question as normally done in any exam and then you decide what must I done. And to help you with that, please make a list of all the actions that you must do. That will help you to understand uh, the question and to, to see what you must do next. And then from that list, or, uh, you must decide what is the judge functions that I must do to answer my question. And again, list the functions. This will also help you to identify the functions in, in uh, the GIS program QGIS. And with that, also make a list of all the data that you will need to answer the questions. So what must I do? List it. What is the GIS functions that I must do? List that as well. What is the data that I need? And make a list of that as well. And there's three actions. These three actions will help you in doing the GIS uh, question or execute the, the assignment. After that, you can then look at your uh, JS, the uh, QGIS software. And what you must do first is I will uh, search for the data that you think you are going to, uh, that you're going to use in your question. And I will give you data more than you uh, need for the project. So from that data, you must decide what data you're going to use. And uh, in your QGIS, you must use the browser to investigate your data. I will discuss the, the program later on when, when we look at the software uh, and what you must do. And then after we have investigated the data, uh, decide if the data that you have list, is it there? And if it is not there, then you know you must create it. So I will uh, leave out some data uh, that you must create and we will discuss that in our demo with QGIS. And after that, uh, there is a link between this uh, list of functions and the functions that you're going to use. Here's a list of the functions that you must be able to do for the exam. The first one is uh, uh, to add the data layers to your uh, program. And this is again the browser in QGIS that you must use or can use to add your data. This is the easiest way for me to, to add my data and work with my data. Yes, we all uh, use this method to identify uh, your data and to analyze your data and see if it is appropriate to use for your problem. The next thing that you must be able to do is to create a layer. And uh, we are going to work with shapefiles for this exercise. Again, how do you create a layer? We will do it in the demo as well, but here's just a, a screenshot or a clip of what you must do. In the layer a menu, there is create layer, and then you're going to create a shapefile layer. I'm going to send uh, this mind map also to you, and you can also use that in the exam. Uh, another thing that you must be able to do is to symbolize your data, and you will find the uh, uh, symbolize a function in the layer properties. Here's just an example in your layer properties, there's symbology, and then you can change the, the, uh, the symbolize option, and we will normally use the, uh, use the classification option there, but we will look at that in the demo as well. And then, then maybe a more difficult one is to select features in your GIS program. It will be based on attributes, or by expression, or based on location. If you use the by expression or attribute, this is the button that you must use, and you will find that button in uh, uh, ArcGIS. 
for based on location what I can propose is that you open your processing toolbox we will look at that in our demo and search for select and then you will find the select by location and you do that we're going to look at that as well and there will be a question that I will ask you how many uh, elements were selected and I will show you how you can uh, see that another thing that you must be able to do is to export features and then uh, export the selection is important but we will look at that and then you must be able to add attributes or information to an attribute table if you want to open an attribute table you're going to use this uh, button or you can right click open attribute table and then you must be able to add a new field you must be able you must edit your uh, layer and uh, as you can remember you must use that yellow pencil and then after that you can add a field using that uh, that uh, logo as well that button and I will show you that also later on and after when you're working with the attribute table then you must also work uh, be able to work with the uh, field calculator and I will show you that and important your answer will be in a layout or a map so you must be able to create a layout or a map in QGIS so this is the functions the nine functions that you must be able to use in your uh, QGIS for the exam and I will give you examples or questions in uh, that you must do to, to do these functions now we're going to look at the at the QGIS uh, I downloaded a, a new version but, but uh, you will use all the functions that you will uh, work with are available in the older versions this one looked different because I only used the dark scene uh, of QGIS but it is the same as the other versions that we did in the class or other examples this is just a dark version of, of my QGIS so if you go back to the mind map the first thing that you must do is to add a layer to your QGIS and we're going to to show you now like I said you must use the browser to add your data this is the easiest way for me I will provide you with a data repository a directory with data in it and you must be able then to add the data the, the data that I uh, use for, for this uh, project I can just uh, zoom or browse to that uh, directory and then you can can use that in your um, in your pro project itself I'm we're going to use data from the Northern Cape and uh, to answer some questions my data is in this directory so how do I add a data or a layer there's two ways you can just double click on your uh, shapefile there or you can uh, select it and drag it to your layers uh, that is the uh, two main ways how you can add data to your canvas and, and like I said I propose that you use the browser method I've already uh, load some data so I'm going to uh, remove this one because it is a duplicate of that one how do you I remove uh, layers you right click on it and you remove the layer you're not going to remove it uh, from your uh, data repository just from the screen or from the program so um, this is how you can add your data the other one is what, what we have indicated here is how do you create a new layer I use uh, OpenStreetMap here or the uh, Google image but uh, in the for the exam I'm going to provide you with a uh, aerial photograph that you must use to capture data so let's uh, zoom here to young Kemtor and let me say I, I need to capture that area as you can see it is uh, I must capture in polygon uh, feature so to create a layer you click on layer create a layer and the new shape file and here remember the first thing that I normally do is because it must be a polygon I chose polygon here and then I go back and chose a name for my uh, shape file I'm going to save it under my temp directory 
so that uh, I know where it is and when I'm finished with, with this demo I can delete it so um, you must save your shape file at the directory that you know if you must open it again you must be able to get it so I'm going to to save my my shape file here I'm just calling uh, it the urban area you can uh, you must use the appropriate uh, name for your layer so save uh, you can uh, if you need to, to add a field that you're going to populate later on you uh, do it here new field I'm going to say use it is a text data I will keep it at uh, 80 uh, characters uh, long and then I say add field list and then I can say okay and then you see it is open here at my uh, layers and to add any data and change data you must edit it. Remember, we use this pencil to toggle our editing. So I switch it on, and you see that is now highlighted. And if I hover over that uh, button there, it is add polygon. So I click on it, and now I capture my my polygon. So there to there, there is maybe a place where I can capture it, and I go along the lines or features where I must capture. And remember your last click. And then you press your uh, right mouse button, and then it will open it here. You see, here's the field that we that we uh, added. So I'm just going to call it urban. You will use the appropriate uh, type for your question. When I say OK, there's my new polygon. And then I can capture this as well. For example, last click, right click. Um, what can I call water or whatever? I'm not sure what that is agricultural land, but let's call it water. And there is my new uh, polygon. When I'm finished with that, I can click on my pencil again. Do you want to save? Yes. Okay, now I want to add points. So again, layer, create layer, new shape file. Again, I first go to my geometry type. Okay, point. And then I say, um, Buildings is the name of my new point layer. I'm not going to add a field, so I can say OK. And then you see uh, there's my building layer. Edit it. And here you can see it is not a polygon, but points now that I can capture. So I, I uh, click on that and I can zoom in here and capture some, some houses there. So you must decide the data that you capture must it be points, lines, or polygons. When you finish there, there is my few houses that I've captured. Again, on my pencil and save it. So I've captured two layers here. Buildings, that is points, and an urban area, that is a polygon. So that is how you capture data. The next thing is, is using symbology uh, that you must be able to do. You can uh, use this to investigate your data or at the end to create your data that you must uh, use to uh, create a layout. How do you symbolize data? I'm going to use this Erwin, the Katlong Erwin, as an example. I can zoom to it. So there's my Erwin uh, zoning for the Katlong just going to zoom to this urban area so that we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to search for residential uh, zoning in this areas. So how do I do that? I uh, Symbology, I double click on it to open the, the properties, Symbology, and I'm going to use Categorized. And the column that I'm going to use is, I think is Zoning, and then I classify it. So there's all the zonings in this specific layer. And uh, if I say or click on OK, here's the legend and here you can see the different colors. The same if I want to investigate my data, I right click on it, open attribute table. There is the attribute table of my zoning layer. And here's the source, the name and all that. Here's the category, description, and the zoning. 
So I'm investigating my my data. I see in this specific residential area, there's dwelling houses there. So I can go through my data to investigate it and see if I need it. Close attribute table. But for my next exercise, I want to, to uh, only use the residential one zoning. So I must select that. That is the one that I'm going to use, select features. And to do a selection in the same layer, I'm going to uh, use based on attributes. So if I click to open that one, I use that uh, select by expression. So you go back to my QGIS. I highlight or select my feature or my layer that I want to use. And there on top is my select feature using expression. Remember, this is only a dark version of, of QGIS. It will be the same on the other uh, normal QGIS as well. So I click on that. Again, I'll make sure it is selected there. There is the Gatlong Urban Zoning, the same as that one. So I open the fields because the data is in the fields. I remember it was under zoning. So zoning equals all unique. And then I look at my residential one, for example, so double click on it. Now my expression reads zoning of select zoning that equals residential one. So I select it. If I close my uh, window here, you see the selection is in yellow. Now I want to export that to a new shapefile. And how to do that is to right click on your uh, a specific layer. This export, and important to remember here, is I want to export or save the selected features. So I, I click on save selected features as, and there I start from the top again. We said we're going to work with shapefiles. The file name as well under my directory temp data. There's already one, so I can to call it residential one. But it is the second time, so I'm just going to give it a two for my second round to, to know that it's the second one. And say save. The other stuff I can leave like that. And then I say, okay, so it is busy, and then it opens the new shape file. If I switch this off, you see only the selected residential that I've exported uh, uh, properties are visible. So I can zoom in and out, and there's my uh, new shape file. And I want to count the number of residential one in my zoning, so I can go back to my zoning layer and open the attribute table. And you can see the green in my case, that is the selected, but then the top will be the count or the number of residential properties or uh, features that you have selected in your select by expression. In this case, it is 9,721 properties of 11,100 are residential one zoning. So this is how you can give me a number when I ask you for a number of, of features in the exam. The next one we were going to look at is uh, based on location. We're going to use uh, the uh, processing toolbox, select by location. I'm just going to close my, uh, my one, my uh, processing toolbox, where you can find it is under processing. And there is toolbox, and it will open the toolbox here. So you can search it here, like I said, select by location. There it is. I'm just going to close it so I can see what I'm going to select with. And because I'm going to do a new selection, I just want to, to clear or deselect my features that I've selected. There's my zoning. There's my dam. Okay, there's the, the, what do you call it, CBA, and so forth. Let's see what can I select.
touch the dam. Let's so much select, uh, uh, see if the dam uh, is inside the CBA area. Uh, it is to the, to the top part, so I'm going to do a selection by uh, location. I search for my select, select by location. Please select from my dam, remember. Uh, the, the one that you want to select from will be the top one and the one that you're going to use for the selection is the, the bottom one so I'm going to select from the dams I'm uh, using the CBA that intersect uh, the CBA great new selection run okay there is a, a problem there but it uh, will run through it if the, you've got the same uh, questions or the same error we can just uh, address it uh, during the exam this is not a big one but we will address it in the exam if you have the same error there so just go through all the all the stuff if I go back to my my uh, hopefully it will be selected okay it is not selected so let's see what what is the problem there you see why it is not selected is that the dam area is not part of the CBD so that uh, that is why it is not selected. Let's try another one. Let's see where did, where did we capture our buildings? Is it part of, of here? Not here, so let's look at the other one. Okay, let's do another selection. I just want to clear it here. I want to select uh, the residential properties. And see if there's any part of that of the additional zoning it looks like it will not be so maybe I must use another example there's my residential okay let's use I want to see which uh, residential properties are, uh, are part of my additional zoning so again I use my select by location Again, uh, uh, the layer that I want to select from is the top one. In the example that I'm going to use is this residential one. And I'm going to use the zoning additional one. Create a new selection and run. If I go back, I think here will be the, this in yellow is the uh, properties from the residential zoning that you can see are uh, connected or overlay the properties of the residential that you can see is the selection again select by location the uh, layer that you want to select from is the top one residential and the layer that you want to use for the selection is the uh, bottom one intersect create a new selection and run And when that is finished, you will see that one will be the selected one as the previous one. Okay, the next one is uh, count. I've discussed that. We looked at export features. Now we're going to work with the attribute table. There's the attribute table. We're going to add a new field. Before you uh, can do that, you must be able to, to use the uh, pencil. And then you use that button to add the field. So let's go back to QGIS. I'm just going to switch off the additional zoning. And say, for example, that we've just seen that that few properties were selected by the additional one, additional layer. So I want to add attributes to say that it was selected by the additional, additional uh, uh, layer. So I selected it here, it is in yellow. And when I open the attribute table of my layer, okay, the wrong one, just want to remove that one. Right click, open attribute table. So there's my attribute table, and you can see there's seven selected. I can move that seven selected up so that I can see. So I just move it up. So there's the seven selected features and I want to indicate that that was part of the additional selection so I'm going to add a field or a column click on the pencil 
now you see that is highlighted so I can a new field I will call it addition additional additional I'm going to leave it as a own number because I'm going to say if it is selected I will then I will add the one so I use a, a, a own number and then I say okay and you, if you go to the right hand side of your uh, attribute table there you will see the new field so now I'm going to populate or uh, add a one to that selected uh, seven properties and for that I'm going to use my calculator open a field calculator update existing field additional one so I'm going to change that no value of the selected uh, records or uh, features I'm going to change that to one there you see it is one in the rest stays no and I'm going to symbolize that again after I finish with that I can switch off my pencil save it and then I'm going to unselect you see there is the same but I'm now going to symbolize it so double click on my residential layer I'm going to use categorize and I'm going to use the the last field additional classify the ones will be pink the rest will be green so if I open it here there you see it is the one that we have changed to the one is now pink and the others are green so what we have done here is we add attributes to attribute table using the uh, calculator the field calculator to do that so there is a, a connection between this one and this one so that is you're going to use the field calculator to add the attribute to that okay now the next uh, thing that you must do is you must be able to to create a layout or a map of this area I'm thinking about that in your assignment problems maybe you will use this functions more than one on different layers so you will not uh, you must not uh, think that you may start from add a layer do all this stuff and create a layout uh, then you are finished you must look at the question and uh, answer the question maybe you will uh, use these functions more than once to get to your answer remember that so the last one for this uh, demo is to uh, make a, a layout or a map and that you will do a project new print layout you can give it a name but it is not necessary so I said you can say okay then you open your canvas your layout canvas and uh, then I'm start here from the right or you can uh, insert or add items here from the top you can decide what is the best so I'm going to add my map first so I drag it so there is my map you see it is the same as this one and then the next one is is I'm not going to use that okay not 3d I'm going to use that later on I'm going to use text to put in my uh, title very important is that your title is the same as your task or whatever okay uh, remember when you there is the selected label and here to the right is your properties for that specific selected item so you're going to uh, write in your name of your title and like I said it must be applicable to your question and it is a little bit small now but here you can open the font size see make it then a good uh, font to see it must be in the center and in the middle of your box so there is your example your title the next one is your legend click on your legend add your legend 
and you will see here it add all the layers that is available here but I don't want all the layers I only want the residential one so if I go back to my layout and I just going to click on my map make it a little bit smaller move my in a little bit and again it is selected here and here's the selected properties and to remove the uh, legend items you switch off the auto update and then you can remove which I don't want the dam because it's not part of my map I don't want the railway is not part of my map that is not part of my map so though I remove it here it is not removed from my uh, layers here it's just the legend that is removed so I'm going to stay there this one I'm going to remove 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 and remove the last one as well so there is the my uh, legend but I don't like that residential one underscore two so I'm just going to edit the title or the name of my layer so I'm just going to remove it I don't uh, rename the shapefile just the legend so then I go back and it will update so there's my new uh, legend but I want to have a frame around it again I select it you see all that blocks there uh, means that it is selected so I can my item properties I can go down here to my frame so I select it there color black is okay so there is my uh, legend the next one that I'm going to add is my uh, scale bar click on that and then I can add it here again it is uh, this is uh, in meters properties so that is fine uh, fine I remember if I add it here with segments I add to 5 then it becomes 5 here as well so increase that again select all that little box items and uh, write 5 there is my my scale bar I'm not going to put a frame around it so I'm going to leave it like that the north arrow but I'm going to use another method to do that so important is that you add a north arrow you use the uh, picture I normally put my north arrow here but you can decide where you want your north arrow again that is selected item properties and here under search directory you can then open that menu it loads a little bit okay here's my uh, pictures that I'm going to use for this example I'm going to use this north arrow so there's my north arrow I can make it bigger or whatever but there's my north arrow the last thing that you can add to your map is your name or student number so when I open the PDF at the end that I know it is yours so there is my properties again I can put in a note so that I know it is your map so this is the map that you must uh, that you must end with important if like I always said if the next elements are not on your map then I will give you zero because that is not a map they must have be a title they must be your map frame they must be a legend and they must be a scale bar a north arrow in a small description of your map semi created by uh, the Iron version in this case so that I know what is your um, it is your map and to end off you must export this to a PDF and save it on a directory and you must provide that to me so you use this button export to PDF that is fine and then you can decide it where you're going to put it or, or, and so that we are able to um, uh, add your question for uh, uh, for which it is save and the end you will provide this uh, PDF uh, for for your marks. See so if I go back to my mind map again I know there will be a lot of stress in the room and all that 
But the lesson that stress is you start before you open your J's or your QJs, dot down the answers to these questions. What must I do? Look at your question and then decide what must I do. And from that, what J's functions must I do? Must I add a layer? Must I select something? And so forth. So list the functions. And from that question, what must I do? What data do I need? List that as well. And then you can open your, your uh, QGIS and use the browser to look at the data, the repository that I'm going to provide to you. Go through the data and add it to your QGIS and investigate it by the attribute table and all the stuff that you can use. And then you decide, is the data there that you need? And some of it will not be there, so you must be able to create it. And then, this is the nine JS functions that I are uh, going to use in the questions. You must be able to add the data. You will also add the data to see what data are, is in the data repository. So you're going to add it. Like I said, use the browser for that. You must be able to create a new layer. You must create a shape file. And uh, uh, you use the uh, QGIS layer of a uh, layer, create layer, a new shape file layer. And remember, you must decide must your data be in the point, line, or polygon, and then you decide in your window which one to choose. And symbolize it. You're going to use your layer properties, double click on your layer, oh, symbolize it, and use a categorizing uh, symbology. And you will use that to investigate your data or at the end to create your final map. Again, the two things that you must be able to select is uh, select by attribute or select by expression. That is the button that you're going to use. Just again, this is the uh, a dark uh, or night version of QGIS. You will see the same button on your QGIS if yours is the, the lighter one. Use that by expression. Select by expression. Based on location. Open your processing toolbar. If it is not open, uh, and then use a search for select, select by location, and you start with the, uh, the layer that you want to select from. The second layer is the layer that you want to use to select the feature. Count, I've shown you, where in the attribute table can you look for the number? And in uh, most cases, here yeah, you want to export your selection. So you export it, export selection, there you right click on your layer and do that export. Remember to use the selected features uh, and then save it as a shapefile in the correct directory. This is the also important one is to be able to work with your attribute table. You can right click on the layer to open attribute table or use that button to, to open the attribute table. And then you must use the, to add the field, you must use the pencil button to edit it. Add the uh, field and, and answer the window. What is the name of the uh, field? Is it the, we must decide important if it is a number or a text that you must put in. The other one then is after we have done that is to use the field calculator to change the attribute of that new uh, field. Remember, look at if it is selected and uh, change it to existing field and then decide to, which, to what you must change it. So look at the video again, or other videos on YouTube, how do I use the field calculator? I think I addressed it in the, the previous video as well. So look there how to do that. Okay, the uh, last one that you must uh, do is to create a layout or a map. And remember what I said about the items that must be on the map uh, to get the points. So this is the exam. Again, look at the problem or the question, and you can use these nine functions, maybe more than once, to answer your question and create the layout at the end. Good luck with the exams, and I.